Louisiana Beer Reviews Bantam American Double India Pale Ale from Pro Pig, Prohibition Pig. Okay, Waterbury, Vermont. Brewed since 2014. So this is a company that's only been around 10 years. This can was given to me by Dustin. Thank you, Dustin. What a great gift. Okay, Main Street, Waterbury, Vermont, restaurant. You come for smoked meat, libations, and fresh beer. A brewery's in the back and serves Latin street food too. Okay. Brewed by Pro Pig Brewery at Zero Gravity in Burlington, Vermont. Oh, contract brewed. Okay, no, I'm not saying that in a negative way. It just, it is what it is. And it's a, uh, it's not an adhesive label. It's a real painted on, you know, label. Wow, nice and fresh. This is one month. It's less than one month old. Yeah, what am I thinking? Okay, so this is less than a month old. It's not months old. It's weeks old. This is going to be a great. Oh, Dustin, this is going to be great. Now, he was worried that the uh, when he gave me the uh, Lawson Sip of Sunshine that it was a little old, but it, it really wasn't. It's only, it was only like seven weeks old and this is less than four weeks old uh eight percent alcohol 70 bitterness units they said it on the website they use domestic pilsner malt and um, carahel something i didn't write that very clearly all right uh and corn sugar so there it is an adjunct ale they're using corn sugar um, as a fermentable the, the hops are cascade chinook oh <laughs> i see what happened i'm sorry let me start again domestic pilsner and wireman carahel barley malt they use wheat malt now we got it right and the corn sugar adjunct cascade chinook Equinot and Mosaic are the hops. It gets a 92 out of 100 on Beer Advocate, so they think it's uh, excellent. And an 81 on Untapped, and it's not too common to find beers getting up to the 80s on Untapped. And uh, I didn't, I forgot to check if they had any video reviews for this beer. So this could be the first video review for this product in the world. On the other hand, it may not be. All right. But I'm going to look and I'm going to watch. All right. So cheers to Vermont uh, and the contract brewers over there. And they also have some in Connecticut that do a lot of fine work, like in Stratford, Connecticut. Connecticut. All right. That's a lively beer. I wasn't paying attention. It's about to come over the top. Ivory head of foam, very thick as you can see, and it's a, um, now the Lawson's was semi-transparent, more of a West Coast, East Coast, leaning more toward West Coast type of situation to, to my perception of it. This one is hazy, it's translucent, so if it was a bright sunny day, the light would come through. It's a, unfortunately, it's a damp, cool, cloudy day in, here in the winter. You can see the bubbles though. There's a pretty fierce bubble stream there. It's orange. Orange. All right. Uh, well, it's oily hop resin. Sort of kind of piney type thing. little fruitiness from these hops equinot and um, and the uh, citra right yeah oh no cascade Ooh, sorry about that cascade chinook mosaic equinot uh, if you watch this channel long enough you know I'm definitely most certainly not an expert on what the hops are supposed to taste like 
So I'm not going to drink a beer and say, oh, that's Mosaic. I know, I know. That's Cascade. There it is, right? Wait, and it's gone now. You know, but I'm not putting that down. If you have the expertise, that's fine. That's good. Actually, that's something to be, you should be proud of the knowledge you've gained. But I just, I'm telling you, I just can't. I can sometimes tell if it's got wheat because it'd be softer. Um, now, corn sugar, yeah, that should just ferment all the way out into pure alcohol. And they might have added that to give it, get it up to eight. But uh, some people take issue with uh, adjuncts. Like, oh no, I don't mess with that. But if it's in this format, oh yeah, well, you know, that's the uh, intricate brewing process. It has to be done. So it's got to work both ways. You can't be against them and at the same time accept them. Just like... Uh, this whole production thing, well, oh, this is a wonderful craft beer, but if it goes above this number, this arbitrary number, I might add, oh, it's not a craft beer anymore. Which is not a legal term, I might add. It's just a marketing term or a generally accepted term, but it has no legal meaning. All right, smells wonderful. Now let's go with the taste, chuz. Okay, now I had a lot of problems with the Hop Magnum Edition, Hop Bullet, Hop Bullet Magnum Edition. Okay, it had a great taste. Not That wasn't the problem. It was that it was under-bittered. It was coming in at 48 bitterness units, but it was at 9.5. I mean, and it tasted like a really delicious American Strong Ale. And I read other reviews, and they had the same problem with it. They're saying it's not really an IPA, not with this. Now, this one, though, has the appropriate bitterness, 70. I, w I wish it was even 80, but, you know, it's working very well at 70 bitterness units. Because it's got what it needs to have to balance that malt sweetness, which the Hoppola did not. It's a fruity beer now, don't get me wrong. This does have a fruity... overtly fruity character and the white bread and the white bread crust but it's not one of those dreadful ones that's all like like you're eating like lupulin powder or drinking lupulin powder in the way you're you're eating it the way their mouthfeel is on some of those and they're, they're just stinging and just not too nice I would say a high medium body, softened maybe by the wheat. There's a Florida man, double IPA from Florida, <laughs> um, Cigar City. Darwin's Beer Reviews is talking about how they jumped it up to nine. I say yes, but I was saying to myself, it's this inter craft beer, big craft beer company war to the top on the alcohol level. They all want to be at 9, 9.5. And it goes around and around. They're trying to get higher and higher. They got the Magnum Edition, the, the Super Atomic, all right? Uh, torpedo, the uh, Tropical Beer Hub, the Fruit Force, Juice, Juice Force, and they all jump into 9.5. And, and sometimes that works out and sometimes it doesn't really too well, but. Um, Apparently, Florida man's jumped to nine, I think he said. I'd like to try it. I loved it when it was, what, eight and a half? Maybe it's nine and a half. Now, I loved it, but um, Cigar City has largely faded from the Louisiana market. Ten years ago, it was really coming in strong, and I was trying all the Maduro brown ale and the High Lie and everything, and I was like, man, this company's got it going on. They really have it, a great game plan as far as their their quality, you know, um, and they seemed like they had a sensible offering, right? I know they had a buyout and uh, I don't know, something went awry. Maybe it was going awry before the buyout or things were starting to slip, but you just started noticing not as much, less stores carrying it. Now you you, you have a hard time finding it in any, in any store. Might see high lie here and there. Better check, better check your dates for sure. This is interesting. It's unique. The way it's built up with its 
diverse ingredients. It, it has a unique flavor. It's not like the Hedy Tabra. It's not like the the um, what's that other one I tried from them? The same company that makes Hedy Tabra. The it's one that people always saying it's better than Hedy Tabra. It's better. Uh, I didn't agree with that, but um, certainly very interesting. And I've had some other eight eight to nines, mostly eights from New England, the New England states. And they're usually, or oftentimes, really nice. And this is a, a standout. <sighs> the bitterness is there, but it's so right. And you're not, I don't think, now, I could be disastrously wrong, but I don't think your macro beer drinker, somebody who, if they drink Yingling traditional lager, thinks they're really stepping out. I don't think they would try this and find it too strong or harsh or too exotic. Where Hetty Topper, they probably would, you know. Focal banger, that's the that's the name of the other one. Some of those they would just be appalled, you know, by by the extreme bitterness, but they might love it. You know, it might they might it might open up a new door and it'd be like, oh wow, this is what beer is about. But this one has an overriding mellowness to it. Even though I've gone through all these descriptors, there's a mellowness. It's like a you know, just a demure quality. It really mellows out after the first couple of sips. And I think it's really fabulous. And if you drink it constantly, yeah, it, it would get old. But once a week, twice a week, oh, I would never get tired of this. Never, 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 never. Hear those sirens. That's not good. This score is going to be so high. Um, one more sip, Now I'm going to pour more for a photo later. I like to put those photos on alcohol legs, and everybody likes to put their photos, show what they're drinking, like, look what I'm drinking. But I, I wish they would, it's not a rule for the group, but I say, you know, what's the ABV? Don't, don't just put a photo, you know, what's the alcohol level, and how do you score it? Like, you know, that's not really hard to do. Like, I'm drinking this, it's 8%, and I'm scoring it a 90 Yeah, a 97. It's just that good. All right, try it there with Sip of Sunshine, maybe even a little bit better. That's debatable. I could try them back and forth. I'm, the score might change one or two points up or down, but they're really high up there. So, yeah, I always encourage people to join Alcohol Eggs. But, yeah, put the. It looks better when you pour the beer in the glass. Is that a rule that you got to pour it in the glass? No. Um, but it's, it makes sense, right? You pour it and let people know how it looks. Give the ABV, give the score. Do you have to write an essay on it? No. Um, probably is a better idea not to do that because a lot of people are not going to read it. You know, I'll read them, but uh, a lot of people won't. But, um, yeah, it's just something that I think is a good idea. So nice lacing around here in this clean glass. So, oh, yeah, 9.7 out of 10. A most excellent product for a rather obscure beer, I have to say. But let's hope that changes and it gets big, but doesn't lose quality. And I'm going to say laissez les bon temps relay. I'm going to end this review by saying laissez les bon temps relay. And y'all go to Vermont and take a brewery tour.